Hallelujah, he is risen. He is risen indeed. Good morning, everyone, on this glorious day. And I trust that you will meet with a risen saviour this morning. We gather today in joy and celebration. And along with the angels, we declare, you seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Let's all join in with our first song together. It's a well-known one, and the, the, the chorus says, Up from the grave he arose, with a mighty triumph o'er his foes. He rose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever for the saints to reign. He rose, he rose, hallelujah, Christ arose. Let's join together as we sing this first song. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for the great message of Easter, your awesome triumph over the forces of darkness and the power of evil. We thank you that in what the world counted defeat, you won the greatest of victories, that what looked to be a disaster proved to be the most glorious of conquests. In the valley of sorrow and suffering, in the shadow of death, you have demonstrated that God is present working out his eternal purpose. And for that glorious truth, we thank you. We pray that the joy and conviction of Christians may be so radiant that all who are lost, weary and searching may be directed towards your lasting inner peace. And Father God, we are very conscious today of those who are suffering through having contracted the COVID-19 virus. We particularly bring before you our Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, and we pray for his healing. That today he will be able to breathe again clearly and his temperature will go down. Father, we also bring our loved ones to you and those that we know who have the virus. And we ask for your healing. Father God, we come to your throne of grace and we plead that this virus will stop spreading. And that just in the days when the Israelites were in Egypt, you stopped the plagues. Please do it again, God. Stop this virus. We come against it in your holy name. 
So, Father, we ask all these things through the precious name of Jesus. Amen.
Learning Young People. And today I want to thank all of you who sent me your models, pictures, prayers, and we also have a video clip. So firstly, we have this wonderful model made by Ruby and Lily built in Lego. It is the crucifixion and the resurrection. Let me show you. So here we have the crucifixion and the resurrection made in Lego by Lily and Ruby. The next slide is an Easter garden made by H. Doesn't it look beautiful? Here is Florence with a prayer and a beautiful picture. Let me read you the prayer that, Rob, that Florence has written. Dear Lord, we have to thank you for the Easter celebration because if you hadn't rose again, there would be no Easter. So thank you so much. Also, we pray for all the people with coronavirus and have lost their loved ones. Amen. Now we have Ella and Alfie with their pictures and prayers. Let me read you Ella's prayer. Dear God, thank you for sacrificing your only son for us, for giving us freedom to live a happy life, worshipping you. Thank you for bringing new life into the world. Please keep us all safe at this time. On this Easter Sunday, we count, we count our blessings for all the positive things in our life. Be with us all over the coming weeks. Amen. Now we have Alfie with also his uh, picture and a prayer. Let me read to you his prayer. Dear God, thank you for sending your son down to earth to die for us. We thank you that he died so all our sins will be forgiven. Please keep us safe in these hard times, Lord, and remind us to be thankful for all the blessings that we have. Amen. And we have a very inventive and creative Charlie this week who has created his Easter models using Minecraft. Well done, Charlie. And now we have our final message to us all, read by Alfie. Happy Easter, everyone! He is risen indeed! Young people, you have done so well this week. You've all been so creative and imaginative. I wonder though, next week, whether you would feel brave enough to perhaps video yourselves reading out your prayers or your poems. People in the core are missing seeing you, and I know that they would just love to see you as giving a message or even reading a prayer. So talk to your parents. Thank you now, and God bless you and keep you safe and healthy.
After this, Joseph, who was from the town of Arimathea, asked Pilate if he could take Jesus' body. Joseph was a follower of Jesus, but in secret because he was afraid of the Jewish authorities. Pilate told him he could have the body, so Joseph went and took it away. Nicodemus, who at first had gone to see Jesus at night, went with Joseph, taking with him about 100 pounds of spices, a mixture of myrrh and aloes. The two men took Jesus' body and wrapped it in linen cloths with the spices, according to the Jewish custom of preparing a body for burial. There was a garden in the place where Jesus had been put to death, and in it there was a new tomb where no one had ever been buried. Since it was the day before the Sabbath, and because the tomb was close by, they placed Jesus' body there. Early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been taken away from the entrance. She went running to Simon Peter and the other disciple whom Jesus loved. They have taken the Lord from the tomb. And we don't know where they have put him. Then Peter and the other disciple went to the tomb. The two of them were running, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and saw the linen cloths, but he did not go in. Behind him came Simon Peter, and he went straight into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying there, and the cloth which had been around Jesus' head. It was not lying with the linen cloths, but was rolled up by itself. Then the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in. He saw and believed. They still did not understand the scripture which said that he must rise from death. Then the disciples went back home. Mary stood crying outside the tomb. While she was still crying, she bent over and looked in the tomb. And saw two angels there, dressed in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been. One at the head, the other at the feet. Woman, why are you crying? They asked her. They have taken my Lord away. And I do not know where they have put him. Then she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. Woman, why are you crying? Who was it that you were looking for? She thought he was the gardener, so she said to him, If you took him away, sir, tell me where you have put him, and I will go and get him. Mary. She turned toward him and said in Hebrew, Rabboni. This means teacher. Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet gone back up to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to him who is my father and their father, my God and their God. So Mary Magdalene went and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and related to them what he had told her. John chapter 20, verses 10 to 18. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said. 
and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, oh, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Amen. Now, who was this woman that the passage of scripture that we have just read about? It does not start with a happy beginning. It starts with Mary Magdalene weeping outside the tomb. In some versions of the Bible, it says actually sobbing. Who was this woman named Mary Magdalene? And why does she play such a prominent part in this event? Why was Jesus so special to her? So much so that we find her sobbing outside his tomb. There is no hard evidence to say who she was, but there is a lot of speculation. But one thing that the Gospels agree on is that Jesus had delivered her of seven demons. Those seven demons could have represented many things. Mental illness, depression, addiction, prostitution, just to name a few. You see, demons come in all forms and guises. But the good news is that Jesus delivered her from them, just as he frees people from the same kind of demons today. Mary had experienced the healing hand of Jesus ministering to her, freeing her from all those things that had bound her. Some theologians say that she was the same woman caught in the act of adultery. The woman the crowd had wanted to stone to death. She'd been rejected, they had called her names, despised her and had wanted to stone her. I wonder if there's anybody here that has ever felt that the whole world is against you and you have nobody that understands you or even likes you. But that was how Mary must have felt before Jesus came into her life. You see, Jesus not only stood up for her against the crowd, but he understood her, he accepted her, but more importantly, he loved her, faults and all. Yes, he told her to change her ways, but he was there to help her do it. Imagine having Jesus as your captain, someone to stand up for you, knowing that he'd always be on your side, because his love is unconditional. Again, it's thought that this is the same Mary that had poured the expensive fragrant oil on Jesus' head. This was a treasured possession. It was something so valuable you would not want to waste it. But Mary chose to anoint Jesus with her treasured possession. This was Mary demonstrating sacrificial love for Jesus. Do we give to Jesus sacrificially? Although we can't be sure who exactly Mary was and what involvement Jesus had in her life, we do know that whatever part he had played, it was very significant and life-changing. Because what is certain is that Mary had become a disciple of Jesus and she loved Jesus very much. Well, we now have some insight as to who Mary Magdalene was but why was she weeping outside the tomb? You see, it was Mary Magdalene, together with the other two women and John, that were there when Jesus died. Peter and the other disciples were not there, but Mary stayed with him to the very end. How much do we love Jesus? Are we prepared to be faithful with when persecution comes to us? Would we have remained to the end? Or would we have left when things got unpleasant? and we might have been implicated. We have seen how important Jesus had been to Mary, and now she had witnessed the agonizing death of her beloved friend. Jesus, the person who had believed in her, who had changed her life and had healed her, never to hear his voice call her name again, or tell her of the wonderful love of the Heavenly Father. 
Now imagine how Mary must have felt to have that one person who had meant so much to her to die. She was heartbroken. And that is why we find her weeping or sobbing outside the tomb. What do you think was going through her head and heart at that moment outside the tomb? When she arrived at the tomb, she must be feeling quite distraught. Anybody that has had somebody die that is close to them will know what it is to be in a state of grief. It feels like a knife deep inside. Your heart feels like it has a weight of a brick and you wonder if the pain will ever stop. But then, the story gets worse. She goes to the tomb to anoint Jesus' body, in our language, to pay her last respects, to put spices on his body. But when she gets there, she finds that the body has gone. Can you imagine going to the grave of somebody you love and finding the grave desecrated? I think all of us can identify with how Mary must have felt. The questions that must have been going round her head. Why, why would anybody take Jesus' body? And where have they taken him to? But then scripture says in verse 12, she sees two white-robed angels sitting at the head and the foot of the place where the body of Jesus had been lying. I don't think she recognised them as angels. She most probably thought they were just two men in white robes. If they had been angels as we imagined them to be with like big wings, I'm sure her reaction would have been very different. But her reaction shows that she was so distraught and consumed not only by her grief, but now the knowledge that Jesus' body had been stolen. But she, she doesn't even seem to be aware of them. She merely tells them that somebody has taken away her Lord and she doesn't know where they have taken him. I wonder if there have been times when we have been visited by angels and perhaps we also haven't recognised them either. Perhaps we have been so preoccupied with things on our mind that we haven't realised who is speaking to us. But the Bible clearly states that angels are active in the world today. And then Jesus speaks. But Mary didn't recognise him. She thought it was the gardener. Maybe she was so consumed by her grief, she could not think of anything else. And anyway, why should she think it could be Jesus? Had she not seen him draw his last breath on the cross? She had witnessed him being carried, limp and lifeless from the cross into the tomb. And she had witnessed the stone being rolled across. So why should she expect Jesus to be alive? Who can blame her for thinking it was the gardener speaking to her? Perhaps one of the reasons Mary did not recognise Jesus was because she was still looking into the tomb, still looking in the past, expecting to see Jesus in the human form, hankering after the way things used to be. Because scripture says in verse 14, she merely glanced over her shoulder and saw someone standing there. How often do we perhaps hear Jesus speaking, but we also merely glance towards the, where the voice is coming from. But then we also carry on looking into the empty tomb, wishing things were still the same. So often we can be so concerned about the past, thinking that somehow things will be the same again, that we fail to miss something amazing that is happening in the here and now. Sometimes we too don't recognise Jesus when he speaks to us. We rationalise things they know, no, it can't be Jesus, he doesn't talk to people today. Or maybe, like Mary, he doesn't speak to us in the way in which we expect, and therefore we don't recognise him. It's not always in the audible voice, such as Mary heard, but Jesus does speak to us today, if only we could take time to listen. But then, in verse 16, he calls her name, Mary. She turns towards him, and it is at this point that she realizes that it is Jesus talking to her. And she answers him, Rabboni, which means teacher. Maybe today, Jesus is calling someone here by name and saying, it is really me you are hearing. Can you imagine the leap of joy in her heart when she hears her name being called Mary? <laughs> And she fully realises that Jesus is alive. 
all her joy, her hopes, her purpose for living, that she thought had been buried in the tomb, now come leaping back to life. The future that had seemed lost and empty was now brimming over with promise. Jesus was alive. Even now, she didn't re doesn't realize the significance of him being there because she tries to touch him. For Mary, Jesus was alive. Yes, his body would go back to heaven, but he would send his Holy Spirit to continue to live with her and be with her, just as he did when he was on earth. And the same Holy Spirit is at work here on earth today. Jesus is alive through the Holy Spirit, ministering, healing, restoring, changing lives. When we started to look at who Mary Magdalene was, we found a broken woman. Someone who had had bad things happen to her in her life. But then she met Jesus and her whole life was completely changed. See, that's what happens when you meet with Jesus. He takes the bad and he makes it into something good. It was Mary that Jesus appeared to first. It was Mary who Jesus told to tell the disciples that he was alive. Are we available for Jesus to use us to tell others? Jesus left his grave clothes in the tomb. And today, if we want that new beginning in Christ, we also need to leave our grave clothes behind. All those things that are stopping us from having that new start with Jesus. We need to turn around, look away from the tomb and turn and look towards Jesus. It says in the book of John chapter 10, I have come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. Do you want to live a life in abundance? Then you can have it today. When something exciting happens, you want to tell others, and that is what happened to Mary. She ran and told the disciples. It says in verse 18, I have seen the Lord, and he is alive. And today I pray that nobody will go away from here without experiencing that Jesus is alive. And that just like Mary, he will touch our lives in such a way that we also will want to tell others, I have seen the Lord. He is alive. It may be today that you're perhaps not at that place yet and you know that you need that special touch from Jesus. Maybe today you have identified yourself with a grieving and broken-hearted Mary and you need healing. Or maybe you have identified yourself with a person who's been rejected and despised and you need to know the unconditional love of Jesus. Maybe today you are hearing Jesus calling your name, offering you a new life, a new beginning. Perhaps there is someone watching today, listening today, who has given their life to Christ, but they have lost that sense of being alive. Today, ask Christ to bring the resurrection alive in your life. Whatever your need is today, Jesus is here, right where you are, ready to meet you, because he is alive. If you want to experience that resurrection power of Jesus freeing you, releasing you, healing you, then he is there, right where you are now. You see, from the bleakest of endings, with Jesus dying on the cross, God is able to bring new beginnings beyond our wildest dreams through the resurrection of Jesus. May God now bless that word to each of you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, this is a season of new beginnings. Not just your glorious resurrection for the dead, but the resurrection of broken dreams, crushed hopes, shattered faith. And we thank you that you can mend and heal what is broken. Yes, it's hard sometimes to believe such new beginnings can apply to us, that we too can start again. And we look at our own situations, the problems that won't go away, the mistakes we go on making, and we see little prospect of change, no reason to believe life can be different. But you have promised that we shall be born again, that anyone who trusts in you will become a new creation, renewed, remade, refreshed 
through your grace. Lord Jesus Christ, this is a time of new beginnings, a fresh start, a day in which we celebrate the promise of resurrection for all, your gift of new life from old, and we praise you for it. Risen Saviour, conqueror of sin and death, raise to us newness of life. Hear our prayer, for we offer it in your name. Amen. Well, let us sing our final song together, Thine Be the Glory. And after the song, I will leave you with the benediction. <laughs> benediction. We go forth on Easter Sunday rejoicing in the risen Saviour, Jesus who goes before us. Live this week, people of God, in the power of the living one. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.